Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Today we are going to discuss about onlays and some of the tips and tricks I use in order to treatment plan and carry out um, onlay treatment on the teeth. So let's look at this clinical photographs and let's try and figure out what kind of treatment we're going to do for that lower right six. So as you can see, lower right six is heavily filled. Almost everything's amalgam thin buckle wall with the crack line there. Now, if you're planning to restore this tooth with indirect restoration, and if you are going to provide this patient with a crown, then you will be damaging a lot of restore, a lot of healthy tooth. Because we know that the buckle cusp is a functional cusp in the mandibular tooth, you will need to reduce a bit more in order to provide that thickness around the indirect restoration. And because of that, you are going to reduce the tooth a lot. Now there is no mesial, uh, lingual, uh, mesial or distal wall or lingual wall present and that's why you will struggle with retention and resistance form in this uh, type of treatment. And that's why these type of treatment I prefer only rather than a crown. And you can see after removal of the all the restoration you can see how little tooth has left. And because of that, and if I'm providing this patient with the crown, I'm going to now take away that buckle wall, a lot of enamel from the buckle wall in order to give patient a crown. Of course, you can use gold crown, which is a gold standard still, uh, in order to do minimal, uh, minimally invasive restoration. However, again, if you, even if you do gold crown, you will still be able to, you, you'll be creating margin and you'll be damaging more tooth. Whereas only will give you conservative approach. So let's look at different materials we can use for onlays. One of the material is composite. Uh, you can use just a simple composite onlay made in laboratory indirectly. You can use modified composites such as bell glass, which is one of my favorite material. It's very old material, but it works really well. You can use porcelain or you can use a hybrid material such as um, uh, Lava Ultimate or Enamic, Vita Enamic. So these are the materials, different materials you need to, you can use. There are different properties of different materials. So just make sure that when you are coming to cementing or bonding, you understand what kind of material you're using. Of course, we can use gold or in uh, non-precious metal. However, if you are looking at aesthetics, gold or non-pressure metals do not work very well. However, gold onlays in the long run has got really good success rate. Now, once you selected material for your onlays, you then need to select what type of uh, material you're going to use to bond or cement this onlay. So are you going to bond the onlay or are you going to cement the onlay? And if you're bonding, are you going to use uh, dual cure resin or light activated resin? Are you going to use a restorative composite or you're going to use flowable composite, some sort of a flowable um, cement in order to uh, bond, uh, flowable resin order, in order to bond the onlay. So there are different aspects of onlays you need to consider. So A, you need to consider what material you're going to use and B, you're going to consider what type of protocol you're going to use to either cement or bond your restoration. In my uh, clinical practice, I almost exclusively use either uh, porcelain, which is Emacs, or I would use bell glass only, um, which is modified resin material. And both of them I bond using heated restorative composite. And I found that the most predictable way in order to do the treatment of only and be, uh, because I'm bonding, I can get away without creating a lot of grooves, notches, and um, retention factors, which you need if you are cementing any of the onlays. So this is the restoration protocol usually I use. So I would remove all the old amalgam, build the tooth up if I need to, and um, then I would bond onlay on top of it. Now, as you can see here, the, the, the idea is you, you, when you're bonding any restoration or any onlay, 
you need to be able to do IDS, immediate dentin sealing, and you need to understand the concept of immediate dentin sealing. I will go through that in some of my future videos uh, in more detail, but that's basically etch, prime, and bond. When you're using bond uh, for immediate dentin sealing, you want highly filled bond, which is one of them is OptiBond FL. Again, as I said in my previous video, that this is one of my favorite bond which I use. Um, once you've done that, you need to air block it and make sure you cure it. You, you remove that oxygen inhibition layer. Um, if you want to do composite, obviously you're not going to remove oxygen inhibition layer. You're going to do the composite and then you air block and cure it as a final cure. And then you would take impression and then bond your only. In order to bond, I heat my composite either using a special heater or wax heater or I would use hot water in a cup, put the syringe or capsule in your gloves uh, and then put the glove in the water and let it, let it warm up a little bit. And that usually works. Having said that, not all restorative composite can heat to a really nice degree and become really nice flowable. So uh, it will never become flowable. It will become quite um, um, softer. So it's not going to be as hard, but there are some composites do not work like that. So just make sure that if you're using new composite, then you're testing this out before you're going to inpatient smart, whether it's easy enough for you to push. I use Genial, um, GC Genial composite, which is which works really well. Um, it's a really good composite, which heats up really nicely. So try and make sure that you use that uh, technique and um, when you're doing bonding, it's very, very important what type of bonding and how you're using it. And this is before and after. So when you're doing onlays, three tips. Make sure that you consider onlay rather than a crown because onlays are much more conservative than a crown. Aesthetic can be difficult when you're doing onlay restoration. So consider onlay with the buckle coverage if you're worried about the aesthetic and consider Emacs versus composite and make sure you bond on lace using um, restorative composite because that will give you much better bond than using any other material for bonding. So I hope you found this short video useful. If you have, please share with your colleagues and friends. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me uh, on my social media or go to my website www.drdevangpatel.com. In the next video, we are going to discuss about post and core restoration and some of the fundamentals of post and core restorations.